Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Watch the breath all the way in, watch it all the way out. And then with the next breath, and then with the next. You're going to stay right here. As for any thoughts that would pull you away, you let them go, but you don't have to let them pull you. If they're going to think, they can think just a little ways, but if you don't follow them, then they don't go very far. Try to get the mind to settle down like this. You're finding a refuge for it. Every day when we chant, we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. What does that mean? On the one hand, we take external refuge. In other words, we take them as our examples. We look at what the Buddha did how he found happiness, and we try to follow his example. We listen to the Dharma to see what it has to say about finding true happiness. We look at the example of the Noble Sangha, see what good examples they set, and then we try to follow them. That's the external refuge. The internal refuge consists of the qualities you build into the mind as you follow those examples. In other words, the Buddha was a person of mindfulness and alertness, so you try to develop mindfulness and alertness in your own actions. Had wisdom, compassion, purity. You try to develop those in your own actions as well. And you find that the qualities of mind that you develop are your protection. I mean, that's what refuge is for. You need protection. Protection from what? You greed, aversion, and delusion, both inside and out. We're subject to other people's greed, aversion, and delusion, and then we have our own seeds of greed, aversion, and delusion. That's how other people control us, and that's how our, our more unskillful ideas control us as well. So if you want to find a little bit of freedom, it's, it's, it's a little bit ironic. To find freedom, you have to take refuge. You have to protect yourself. In other words, you have to protect yourself from your own unskillful impulses, and then when your unskillful impulses are taken care of, you're not going to be tempted by anybody else's. That's how you become free, and that's how you find true safety. So every time you think about taking refuge in the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha, try to remember it's not just outside. It's not just the Buddha who lived 2,600 years ago, or the Dharma that's in books, or the Sangha, the, the stories you've heard from the past. It's, essentially, it's the qualities you can build in your mind by taking those good things, those good examples, and following them in your life, and finding that you, your own mind benefits as a result. It's this internal refuge. That's where the true refuge lies.